read from the Old Testament. We're going to start off with the Old Testament. We're reading from the book of Isaiah the prophet, uh, chapter 49 and verse 13. Isaiah the prophet, chapter 49, chapter 49, verse 13. This is a live translation from the church in Kipisia, Athens, Greece. Shout for joy, O heavens, rejoice, O earth. Burst into song, O mountains, for the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Those you may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Your sons hasten back, and those who laid you waste depart from you. Lift up your eyes and look around, or your sons gather and come to you. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, you will wear them all as an ornament, as ornaments. You will put them on like a bride. Though you were ruined and made desolate and your land laid waste, now you will be too small for your people. And those who devoured you will be far away. The children born during your bereavement will yet say, in your hearing, this place is too small for us. Give us more space to live in. And then you will say in your heart, Who bore me these? I was bereaved and barren. I was exiled and rejected. Who brought these up? I was left all alone. But these, where have they come from? This is what the Sovereign Lord says. See, I will beacon to the Gentiles. I will lift up my banner to the peoples. They will bring your sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their shoulders. Kings will be your foster fathers and their queens will be your nursing mothers. They will bow down before you with their faces to the ground. They will lick the dust at your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. Can plunder taken from, be taken from warriors or captives rescued from the fears? But this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from the warriors and plunder retrieved from the fears. I will contend with those who contend with you and your children will, I will save. I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. They will be drunk on their own blood as, his, as with wine. Then all mankind will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob, I mean. A characteristic that God has, our God, our living God, a God that we understood, we came to know, we touched uh, and our, our eyes saw and our hands felt and our soul was filled with his presence and that is compassion. This is what we uh, experience, that God is able to show compassion uh, to his people because they're people that want God and they're people that do not want God and anyone who doesn't accept God cannot indeed become a son of God but anyone who accepts Jesus the father God is making him or her his child he's giving him or her authority therefore because you have accepted Jesus Christ in your life and you said Christ please uh, save me with a simple prayer God now comes along by miracle and the greatest miracle of all throughout the earth is the rebirth of a man that 
God is changing people. And now these people have been transformed. He saw uh, themselves, their inner person, all the empty spaces in the, their hearts have been transformed into, the child, into a child of God. And now his life is being filled with the presence of God. And now the people of God now are enjoying what God has given to his people. And now we said before that a characteristic of God is compassion and comfortation. Because God visits his people many times to show his compassion and comfort. And now the word of God actually says that shout for joy, heavens. There should be joy in heavens. There should be rejoicing on earth and songs for the mountains. Why? For the Lord comforts his people. The Lord will be comforting His people and will have compassion on His afflicted ones. But is it possible for me to be a child of God and have sorrow? Apostle Paul confirms and testifies that this is the case. Yes, there is the outer sorrow that is trying to enter us all. But through Jesus Christ, we are being comforted. And we have been comforted with such comfortation, such compassion, that we are now able to also show the same compassion and comfortation to others. Because Jesus didn't hide it from us, that the gate is narrow and the road is, and the path is through sorrows. There's sorrow in the path because the man of God has to go up against the enemy and sin but he also has to go up against the desires that his heart is birthing, is giving birth to, rather. And with the weapons of, God, of Christ, he needs to be able to overcome and be triumphant. I, the afflicted ones, a promise of the afflicted ones. The, therefore, there can be affliction into the heart of man. And through many sorrows, we will be entering the kingdom of God. The Spirit of God was shouting in the first apostolic church. And this was indeed what happened. And even the ones that were alive, the ones that wanted to live a proper life in these latter days, a spiritual life in Jesus Christ, they will be persecuted. And there will be sorrow. And we see how if we lift up the name of God and testify His name in our schools, our colleges, our workplaces, there's persecution, there's outer sorrow, but God comes along and He will comfort His people and He shows compassion to us all. And brothers and sisters, Zion needs to understand when the Lord is coming to comfort His people. Because the Word of God says that Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me, the Lord has forgotten me. My Lord, says Zion, My Lord has forsaken me. But have you forgotten about all these things that God has done in your life? Have you forgotten the day that God came and changed your life and transformed you? Have you forgotten how many times He came and strengthened you? So had compassion in your life and helped you out in your problems and sorrows. This is our heart. This is how our heart is. And God knows about that very well. And we do thank God because He knows. But God now comes along again and again and again. And He will never cease and stop coming and stop revealing and stop showing compassion and comfortation to His people. But our heart, is, it, is our heart ready to accept that compassion? And you know, when Jesus Christ moved on this earth and moved into Jerusalem, came into Jerusalem, He wept twice at least, as we see in the Bible, for Jerusalem. And you see now what is happening in the land of, Ju of the Israelites now. And the Word of God confirms that Jerusalem will, will, be, will be taken by the nations. Everyone will be walking around, will be stepping into this ground, and it will be of no... Um, there will be no peace in this land. And we see it now. We see, we are seeing it throughout the ages. And for the people of the Old Testament, when Jesus walked in, the, in, this, in these verses, rather, we see Him weeping. He even said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who puts the prophets to the sword, kills them with the sword. How many times did I warn 
to gather you around and show you compassion, but you didn't want to. But you didn't want to come. You didn't want to be gathered. And these words were for the Israelites, the believers, how many times I truly wished and wanted. And he was speaking just like a God. God wanted to come to Jerusalem. And how did he come to Jerusalem? He came through the messengers of God, the prophets, through the Spirit of God, through His Word. God would visit Jerusalem in the Old Testament through the prophets, uh, Moses, the Word of Moses, the Old Testament, the law. God would come again and again. And He will bring forth great words. And it is very important for us when we are set, we have been said by God and when we have been given word from God to give it out, to pass it along. If you're a prophet and God is giving you a word, you need to trump it out. You need to rather shout it out. Use the trumpet that you've been given. God has sent you to give out a word and you have the word of God as a prophet. And that is for the build up through the word of God. A, a word of compassion, a word of strengthening in the gathering of people, in the church. Bring it forward. Do not stop. Do not step back. Do not say that someone else will say it. It's okay. No, God spoke to you. God has given this word to you. And these servants, the prophets in the Old Testament, like Jeremiah, were given word. Jeremiah says that I'm a small, but a small child. What can I say? And that is the reality for us as well. We are insignificant and powerless, but we have a God that is powerful. And we do thank God because He's not asking for us to be strong, but He's asking for our will. If you've been given the Word of God in you, then pass it out. And if you see someone bringing the Word of God to you, say that behind Him, God, this is the Word of God to me. And many times the people of Israel, God rather, wanted to gather around his people through the word of God, through the prophets. And he says that I wanted to gather the nation, your people, Jerusalem, my people, said God, because they were scattered. Because they were in sin, because they were in idolatry, because they have departed from the true God and they have turned their eyes to the idols of this world. Let us not turn our hearts and our eyes to the things of this world because the Word of God will not be heard if that is the case in our lives. And we even will not accept the Word of God in our hearts. But even though I wanted to gather you around, I wanted to gather you in my embrace. Can you see now that beautiful imagery? The Word of God says, just like the, the birds are trying to nest the, the young ones. The, God wanted to, to bring together the people of, of Jerusalem and show compassion. And we see in Deuteronomy, just like the eagle is uh, gathering around his youngs. And he's guarding the nest. And we see the eagle who can go up and down. He can go up to great to great mountains but the first thing that he does is to gather and secure his nests his children we are the children of the eagle eagle is Jesus for us isn't it and through the Spirit of God and his word we are seeing him coming to shelter us to secure us in other words, to show compassion and confortation in our issues, in our troubles, to strengthen us in the days where we are weak. Give us a word to uh, be strengthened in the days that we are weak, to promise us and so and confirm to us that I'm coming again to receive my church. This is how God is bringing together His youngs. And after you are shown comfortation and compassion, the Word of God confirms. He now uh, raises himself up and gathers and gets and brings the, um, his youngs with him and raises them up in the air. As you therefore accept 
Christ and you are under his wings, then Christ will raise, will lift his wings up. But now not to gather us, not to, not to shelter us, but to take us with him and bring us to the depths and the heights of his spirit. And what we are expecting is the rapture of the church. It's the time where we will be gathered by Jesus. There's nothing else we need to hope for. There's nothing else we need to put our trust onto. For our healing, amen to the name of God. For the promises of God, yes, surely we will receive them. But unless the, our heart has roots in the Word of God and sure, uh, comfort, sure, sure hope that God will receive us, we won't be able to go through these latter days. And now God comes along and speaks to Zion. Zion who says, the Lord has forsaken me and the Lord has forgotten me. God himself confirms that Zion is bereaved in bereavement and barren, exiled, rejected. These are the words of God in verse 21. You are by yourself. You're feeling the loneliness and you are walking in a desert. You are a slave. You are bound with uh, desires, with shackles. Of course, Zion was set free along the way and we have been set free along the way when we uh, came into God and we became believers and God uh, transformed us. But once again, we see ourselves binded along the way. And we were moved to every doctrine, to the left and to the right. We will be drifting there and here and there. But now God comes along and speaks to Zion, the child who is weak whether it is that through rejection, exile. Now God comes along and says, Is it possible for a woman to forget about the child that she is having? Now look at the mother. Verse 15, can a mother forget the baby at her breast? We can see the mothers in this world and we can compare about this sign. And we can see the love of God. Now see the love of the mother for her baby. Is it possible for a mother to forget the baby at her breast? And we see that the baby that is uh, being fed at the breast of the mother is the weakest. If the, um, a child is 15 or 20 years of age, you can say that they have some kind of strength, but that child, the infant, has no strength, no power. All the, all the feeding, all the power, all that is necessary for it, that child, that infant is basing upon her mother. And that is a verse for us. If that is the case then, can the mother forget the baby at her breast? and have no compassion on the child she has born, though they seem to forget the word of God, because there can't be such a woman. I will not forgive you. God now says these words to you, that even if the utmost sign of love, that is the mother and her child, even if that comes undone, God will never forget you. Only the Spirit of God can indeed give to us and confirm in our hearts about that love that God has. Allow therefore your heart. Let your heart be filled with the Spirit of God. Let your heart open. Not now, because you're listening to the Word of God, but every single day. Allow the Word of God and the Spirit of God to be in you so that God may show you how He loves you indeed, that He has never forsaken you, not forgotten you. But I have, I, ha, I have engraved you on the palms of my hand. Your walls are ever before me, says in verse 16. All the details of your life, your thresholds, your boundaries, everything is in the palms of my hands. And now God starts with the promises. Your sons, hasten back. My sons? But I am barren. I am bereaved. This is what the Word of God says. You say that you are barren, but your sons hasten back. These are not my words. These are the words of God. Blessed be in the name of God. And those who laid you waste depart from you. 
Who is laying you waste? Sin. The sin is the one that is laying you waste. And as the Lord has prepared valleys and prepared gardens for you, sin that is in your heart will make you depart from these, these places and makes you walk into desolate deserts because there are paths that the Spirit is leading us into, just like Christ moved into, but there are deserts that I select because I am selecting sin in my life, because I am selecting the things of this world, because I love this world and not the things of God. But even now, the Word of God says, the ones that are laying you waste and they will depart from you. I will come again, says God, and I will set you free. Lift up your eyes and look around. All your sons gather and come to you. Look around you, but not with these eyes. See with the eyes of faith. And see that all your sons, all the fruition that God is going to provide you with, what, you, what the Lord will give to the church, they will come around, they will be gathering. See them with the eyes of your faith. And God showed me, that we were in a beach and we would move around and on one hand there was a sea that was a world of as we know very well and i'm looking around to my right hand and there was a great glass very high and very long and i could see it as far as the eye would go and right behind this glass, there was great, a great number of people, many souls. And I understood that this is the fruition that, the, that God would give to the latter church. The souls that would be saved throughout the sea, through the sea rather, from the sea. And they will be added to the church within these souls. We are praying and God will provide grace so that our people may also be saved. May God be blessed. Brothers and sisters, let us look with the eyes of our faith. We are weak. We are bereaved. We are barren. We are in exile and rejection, moved here and there. But let us see what God has planned to do. The sons that you will receive, they will say to you these words, they will say, uh, this place is too small for us, says in verse 20. The children born during your bereavement, they will say that this place is too small for us. And you will say, where were they? And the answer is, they were prepared by God. You will ask in verse 21, who bought me these? God did. God prepared them. This is why you will say in your heart, who bore them? Because you will see them all of a sudden being right next to you and asking you to enlarge the space, give us more space to live in. That is why we need to give glory and exaltation to him. All glory, power and exaltation belongs to Him. And let us know that and let us confirm and testify that. I will beacon to the Gentiles and I will lift up my banners to the peoples and they will bring your sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their shoulders. Verse 22 and verse 23, kings will be your foster fathers and their queens your nesting mothers. They will bow down before you with their faces to the ground and they will know. Then you will know that I am the Lord and those who hope in me will not be disappointed. And now we come to the critical point. The ones who are hoping upon the Lord, they will not be disappointed. The, and Zion says in this example, My Lord has forsaken me. Verse 14, my Lord. You may feel that the Lord has forsaken you, but He never stopped being your Lord. You, you may feel that the Lord has forgotten you, but He never stopped being your Lord. He stayed. Sea state, Zion state, in exile, in rejection, in bereavement, in sorrow. Through the struggle and affliction so that all these things may go away. So that, and, and see rather hard, one hope, 
that the Lord will come eventually. And we need to do the same. We need to keep these verses. We need to keep these words because it is written and the word of God cannot be undone. That we are all going to grow weary. And this word is especially for us in these latter days. We are all going to grow weary because the latter days are difficult as the ancient Greek text says, difficult. The, the, the Greek ancient text used the words halepi, which means difficult. These are our days because of the sins of the world. We cannot b bear them anymore. We cannot bear this world because of the sin that we see around us and we are being afflicted because of that sin the utmost, at its utmost level or because they, these are difficult times to go by economically. Uh, through the issues of this world. These are difficult times indeed. But through these difficult times, you need to lift up your eyes to the Lord and look around because you're going to gonna grow weary indeed. And even the young, the chosen ones. Why? Because the youngsters seem to have all the power. They have life in them. They have power in them. But even them, they will grow weary there's no one that will escape this situation. But you need to confirm, yes, Lord, I've grown weary. But the word of God says something that the ones that are waiting for the Lord, hoping upon the Lord, longing for the Lord, they will renew their powers. What are you waiting for? The answer is I'm hoping, I'm waiting for, for the time of the rapture of the church, for my beloved one to come and receive me. This is what I'm waiting for. I'm coming quickly, says the word of God. I'm hoping and longing for Christ to come and receive me. And I know very well that in that situation that I'm in, He will come and give me strength because the Word of God says that they will renew their power and they will receive wings like eagles and will go up and the Lord will come. How is He going to do that? Through the Spirit of God. Because the latter church, the last church, they will be able, the last church will be able to win with the, through the Spirit of God. We won't be able to stand in any other way other than the Spirit of God, other than the exaltation of the Spirit, through the exaltation of the Spirit in these latter days. We will be entering the house of God and eventually, instantly rather, we'll be uh, baptized, filled rather with the Spirit of God and we'll be praising God. And I say this to you now, and the Word of God is confirming that very clearly, saying that for Abraham, Abraham, who didn't second guess or thought, thought about it again and again, that the promise of God. And there's a promise to us. God will come and receive His church, His people. And he didn't, he didn't go back. He didn't lose faith because the issue for us is to lose faith. That is the danger for us. And say that the Lord is delaying. I have this to do and I have that to do. And I have so many things that I need to take care of. And I will lose faith to the promise of God. That is the Lord is coming to receive you. But Abraham did what? He received strength in faith. And he exalted God. Brothers and sisters. We need in our heart to have exaltation. Thankfulness in our hearts. Let us open up our hearts today. Because the Lord is expecting this from us. Whatever He needs to do, He has done. He has given us the Spirit. Blessed be the name of God. He has given us the Holy Spirit of God. That is a beautiful gift that He gave us. God Himself is living in us. Let us therefore open up our mouth. Let us open up our hearts in the prayer, in our prayers, in our praying corner, in the gathering of the people of God. And let us thank Him. Even if I am weary, yes, even more than. If you are weary, you need to praise God even more. When you are weary, you need to praise God even more. Why? Because you are His child. Because right then and now and then, you will understand the, the fact that you have been called the child of God and how beautiful and how important it is. Nothing is more important than that. Even if you win all over the world, 
even if you win all the world, even if you are receiving all the possessions in this world, it doesn't matter if you lose your soul. And God has given to you and I this gift that is called the salvation of your soul. And now you're holding the ticket of God. Keep it. Do not step back. Move forward. Do not step back. Keep it close. Keep it next to you and exalt it, the Almighty God. And He will come and He will fill you with His Spirit. God will come along and He will give you exaltation, crying out. And He will give you. Then throughout exaltation and crying out, the walls of Jericho would go down. And all these walls of injustice, of unfaithfulness, of shackles, of bound, of bindings, shackles and issues that are coming to bind even the children of God they will go down in an instance because the Spirit of God will do so we are weak but our God is powerful I mean